So we are still in Nassau and still feeling the effects of our Sigma Terra. So that's partially what's kept us here. And also, we had to get some sail repair work done. So that started back in St. Augustine. So now we are walking to Phillips Sailmaker. Uh, haven't felt like filming too much this past few days, so I'm a little behind on uh, stuff here in Nassau. But try and get you some footage from the sail shop today as we get there. So off we go for our walk. Morning time. Not feeling that great, but we're hanging in there. Here we go. Back a couple months ago in St. Augustine, two lazy sailors didn't put their sail cover on, and this was the result. Fast forward to West Palm Beach, and we took the sail down to give it a thorough look over. That doesn't look so good there, though. You want to go grab that uh, Dacron tape downstairs? We start right here. Mm -hmm. After discovering and using some sail tape on a few spots, we decided it was time to take it to the professionals in Nassau. It's a good thing our taxi was a minivan. Yeah, let's check it out. Even while being very lethargic with our Sigraterra and dealing with a good bit of wind still, it was great to put our repaired mainsail back on. Even after doing this four to five times now, I'd say over the past year, we still struggle with it. But we're getting better. I'm going to rewind the clock again just a little bit to pre Sigraterra time so we can show you a couple of our adventures in Nassau before we left. We found craft beer, like of course we do, found the brewery nearby. We also had a chance to check out the massive Atlantis Hotel and Resort and the very cool aquarium inside called The Dig.
halfway through. No, not even halfway. We're about a quarter way through. And we're approaching a little shallower area, so we're gonna watch for some coral heads coming up. What's our speed, Captain? Yeah, we're about six and a half, sometimes seven. How's our sails looking? Beautiful. Nice. Somebody might get hurt. Shake your hips, girl, and lift up your skirt. Yeah. No time to lose, no time to waste. First, second, third, home on another round. Just give me. Okay. Hi, Amy. Hi, Christopher. I just had a delightful day sailing with you. You did? Yeah, it was fantastic. Excellent. After a short motor trip out of the Nassau Channel, we shut the engine off after sails were up. And we had perfect wind. Yeah between 13 and 19 knots, usually around 17. A little chop on the water, but nothing too extreme. And we sailed pretty constantly at six and a half to seven knots of speed, which was really pretty good. And the wind was perfect and perfectly in our favor. And we had to do zero tacking. We stayed absolutely on course the entire way. Water was gorgeous. 30 feet, 20 feet, sometimes 10, 12 feet, but ultimately it ended us up here at uh, Highborn Key? Oh no, Allen's we're at Key. Allen's Key and Leaf Key. Allen's Key. The Iguana Islands. And Leaf Key, where we will soon go iguana hunting. Yes. Um, but you can't get them. No. Yeah, you can only take pictures. We'll shoot them oh. with our camera. <laughs> But first, we decided to do a little snorkeling around our boat and check out our area. We kept our eye on this barracuda that was hanging around. Turns out, he was keeping his eye on us too. He followed us around for pretty much the entire time we were snorkeling throughout the area. Long enough that we named him Barry the Barracuda. And then Chris found our first two conch. We each took one and swam back to the boat, all the while Barry was keeping an eye on us. Nice. Chris grabbed them a little fresh water. That should keep them happy until we're ready to, you know, cook them. cleaning. You can see shell thickness, flared lip. We've got ourselves a beautiful conch, good size, nice specimen. Tools, we have a drill, ice pick. All right, first things we do, start with some beer. Now, one row, two row, three row. I'm gonna drill between the second and third row. After laying the conch flat, facing me, right around here. Whoa, that was fast. 
Yep, that's what they look like after you yank them out of the shell. So why would we want to eat this slimy, disaster of a looking creature? I'll be honest with you. The people of the Bahamas have it figured out. These guys are delicious. You'll have to excuse my knife skills. This was the first time that we attempted cleaning conch. I got much better after the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Honed in my skills. Conch meat is apparently very tough. Very tough. Uh, I'll do a uh, quick, quick conch. I don't know, we haven't done this much. So conch number two, day number two on conch. Day two, I got one. Two, two pieces of conk cut into two parts. Since it's very tough, we need to tenderize it. So I take and cut one of them in half. Very, very, very on the muscle. Now we smash. And smash time. Tenderizing the conch makes it much easier to cook and I'll say it again this stuff is delicious once cleaned and tenderized we put it into a slight marinade and put it in the fridge to chill it out all right once all pieces are smashed to a pulp and uh, you have bits of Kong flying through your galley <laughs> on the couch on the ceiling. Oh, you know, it's wear out. Uh, it's not that bad. The carnage is not that bad. <laughs> then we have key lime. Mm -hmm. After a few attempts, I found that lime juice, black pepper, a little salt, and some white wine is a perfect starter marinade. A sprig or two of fresh thyme from the boat garden is also awesome. And good. Mm -mm -mm. Lime juice and corn. A little pepper. And then we'll season it a little more before we cook it. But for now, I'm going to seal that up and chill. Yeah. Chill. <laughs> Join us next time as we head south in Exuma's a couple islands down to Long Key and Chris makes some conch fritters. 